So now it's clear. Damien was behind all the Final Destination movies. So Damien the Omen 2 tells the story of young Damien as he is now a preteen in a military academy as everybody around him slowly starts to discover his true nature. What is up guys and welcome back to the Omen review series. If you missed my review of the original Omen that is live on this channel, be sure to check that out before you check out this one. We're going to go through all four of the original Omen movies as well as the 2006 remake and then we're going to rank all of these next week and then rank them again on Halloween during this year's 31 on 31. So be sure to hit the subscribe button if you are an Omen fan so that you do not miss all of that awesomeness coming for the Omen. So this was actually a first time watch for me. I've only seen the original and the remake, so the three sequels are all gonna be first time viewings for me. I have not really heard anything good at all about three and four. And walking into this one, I thought that two was one of those like cult classic movies, at least it seemed to be, where some people are not too high on it, some people actually like it better than the original. And so I really had no expectations of what this movie was going to be. So starting right off with the positives for this sequel, I think that Damien is really well acted for what they're trying to go for here. I believe the actor's name was Jonathan Scott Taylor. And I don't think he really went on to do much else, but for a pre-teen version of Damien, that is slowly starting to realize his powers, starting to realize his place in the universe, starting to toy with that good versus evil and, and feel like he is more powerful than everybody around him. I thought that all of the emotions that would come from that character, for the most part, they do deliver pretty well, not only with what they're given the character to do, but what they're giving the actor to do, and he delivers. Yes. Born in the image of the greatest power in the world, the desolate one desolate because his greatness was taken from him and he was cast down but he has risen mark in me now being that this movie is much more focused on just kind of framing the story around the different kills and we'll talk a little bit more about that later one kill in particular was actually pretty badass to the point where i'm kind of surprised i haven't seen it brought up more in some of these like best kill countdowns or even just in horror groups somebody sharing like hey how awesome was this one when the kill comes for the doctor, the doctor that discovers that Damien's DNA is not human and there's some jackal chromosomes and shit like that going on in there. And he's inside this elevator and the elevator starts to fail and drop. And I thought it was just gonna be as simple as him falling all the way down, but then it stops. And even though he's a little bit bruised up, he's like, man, uh, that, that sucks, but at least I'm okay. And then it cuts back to this elevator wire just shooting down the shaft. And I was like, I wonder if they're gonna show it. and. They show it. They cut that motherfucker in half. So being that the movie is going for Carnage Candy much more than the first film, uh, I liked that. That was the one kill of the collection of kills that we get here that I will remember this movie for. And my final positive, yes, my final positive, is that the final little plot reveal that his aunt was a Satanist the entire time and she turns around and stabs what was the one hero of the movie and reveals that there's just no stopping Damien and then eventually succumbs to her fate as well. I actually was surprised by that. That caught me off guard. Not often can a movie do that, but watching this, I genuinely was surprised when she turned around and stuck all the knives into her husband and said, I've always been with him. Now moving on to the negatives. Unfortunately, Damien Omen 2 is just a lesser retread of the events of the first film. I mean, they basically just take the plot and take the direction that they went in that original and just repeat it here to where somebody is trying to say, you know, Damien's the Antichrist, somebody listen to me, that, that crazy guy, just like at the beginning of Damien, and the two people who are now his aunt and uncle, who are his parents, take the whole fucking movie to finally get a clue that he actually is the Antichrist. So as people slowly start to think things and figure things out and, and start to plot against Damien, they get offed one by one by one, wash, rinse, repeat of the first movie but not anywhere near as effective. And a lot of that's because the movie doesn't really have a whole lot of story here. I mean, it's a very bare bones story. It's just very stock skeleton plot of the first film. And all of the focus here, like I've already mentioned, is pretty much on setting up these kill scenes, which is kind of an interesting direction because I was watching this and I kind of was coming to the realization that Final Destination must owe a lot 
to the Omen movies, especially this one, because it's essentially like a Final Destination movie to where you get these little Rube Goldberg machine deaths going to where something falls here, which hits something here, which knocks something here, which pushes something that kills somebody. And the one kill that stood out, I've already talked about, there's a couple others here that are interesting, but if you're gonna go for kills, that one kill in the elevator, that dynamic should have been in every single one of these. And that almost would have raised this movie a full star for me because if you're gonna go for carnage candy, if you're gonna go for kills, if that's gonna be your bread and butter, then you better fucking go for it. Don't shy away from gore. So unfortunately, aside from that one kill, there are a lot of mostly bloodless deaths or, or very light on the blood and the kill setup just gets repetitive to where somebody finds a detail, whether it's a reporter or a doctor or a teacher or a random person, they find a little detail and go, hmm, that's peculiar, and then they walk away and then shit just starts falling and breaking behind them and you're like, well, you're fucking about to die. Watch out for that raven, here it comes. And so by the second time that happens, you just expect it. As soon as somebody starts talking, you're like, okay, well, I know how the next 10 minutes of this movie are going to go, and you're right every single time. And it also creates this lack of tension and this lack of that sense of dread that was so brilliant in the first film because by the second or third person that gets off in this, you feel like there's no threat to Damien whatsoever. If any random character just starting to have the inkling that something is off with Damien leads to their violent death, then anybody that's genuinely trying to go for him or dive at him with a knife, there's just gonna be a fucking 747 that comes out of nowhere and takes that person out because it just happens so often and so quickly to every single character, you never once feel like there's any sort of climax coming where Damien might be stopped. And there's also not really much of a mystery to unravel here. There's no extra details about Damien. There's no like, you know, reveals of how he is going to bring about the end of the earth or anything that they're starting to explore or trying to figure out. It's just people once again finding out that Damon might be the Antichrist or is the Antichrist. And we've already been through that and we've had that definitive answer given to us in the first film. So we know he's exactly what they're saying that he is the entire film this time. So there's nothing to reveal to us plot wise. And also a small element of the direction that they went in this movie that felt so sorely missing was that whole element of the omens. The, you know, the whole thing in the first movie about the pictures telling you very clearly how somebody was going to die and giving you this foreboding sense of, of tension about what does that mean? Is he gonna get stabbed there? Is something going to slice through? Is, is he gonna get shot? What's gonna go on? They completely get rid of that element. Now, obviously you can't have another photographer coming around and photographing all these random people because it would be repetitive and be ridiculous and it would actually make the movie worse, but there could have been any multitude of other ways to have that omen element brought back into it and they just forgo that. You just see the aftermath. There's also quite a few scenes in this movie where they're talking about agriculture, where it's just a bunch of adults standing around. And that's all they're talking about to try to flesh out, I guess, the political side of this story about how Damien is going to eventually be ultra powerful within politics. And some of that might interest some people, but I do not like talking politics. I do not like hearing politics. I don't care about agricultural politics or any of that. So every time the movie focused on this, my brain just went control alt delete mode until a kill came back. But one of the biggest disappointments for me overall is how they decided to execute the character arc of Damien in this movie. Because by 30 minutes in, I knew exactly what this movie was trying to deliver me. I knew it wasn't going to be as uh, as fulfilling of an experience as the first film, but maybe they'll do good with some kills. Maybe it'll be a tense experience or it'll be a little bit of a thrill ride. And there was a moment in the movie where I really stood up and kind of got interested in Damien as a character. Whenever he finds out from Lance Henriksen of all people, who is a secret Satanist within his little military academy, to go and read the book of Revelations and he gets the revelation quite literally that he is the spawn of Satan. And he runs out upset he's he's scared he's he's like why me yelling at the water and that was the moment where i was like that's interesting so he doesn't actually want this he's a bit of a douchebag but he never really knew you never got, got the sense that he didn't know or he didn't feel it inside that he was this all-powerful being so when he finally does and there's this hesitation there's this turmoil there i was like that's cool are they going to explore that more is he going to go through the rest of the movie toying back and forth or maybe even heading towards the good before something inevitably knocks him back down no that's the only fucking scene you get that even even begins to 
latch onto that side of his psyche. He's like, why me? And then from then on, he's just full on dick. He's just full on evil, embraces it fully, doesn't care. And I was like, what a waste. What is the point of that scene if you're just gonna tease something that you don't even fucking bother with? Even to the point where he eventually goes and has that final confrontation with his cousin Mark, who is his best friend, and he's like, I love you, Mark, please join me. I'm the all-powerful being and I'm going to rise, rise with me, and he's like, no, and he goes, all right, well, fuck you, click, and then he screams for a second, and then he's over it, and it's just like, dude, let him linger in his emotions a little bit, make him feel somewhat human. So overall, guys, this movie was okay. It's not terrible. It's not something that I would tell you to avoid if you're watching the Omen movies, but it is nowhere near the greatness of the original film, and there's just a lot of untapped potential here. There's a version of this movie that could have been a pretty damn good follow-up to the first film that knew what movie it was trying to be, and was that movie. But here, they just, they, they try to be the first film and they fail. They try to do some interesting things for a few seconds that they should have carried out through the rest of the film. And for the one awesome kill that they had, they should have put that level of creativity and intensity into the others, and they would have had a pretty damn good little slasher movie on their hands. But as is, it's just an okay Omen movie. So if you love the original Omen and you wanna see Damien as he has grown up, Definitely lower your expectations, but if you're a slasher fan, you'll get some enjoyment out of this movie. So find it online and stream it. So what do you guys think of Damien the Omen 2? Is this your favorite of the franchise? Do you think that there was potential here to be better than the original, but they kind of lost their way? Or do you love the original and think that this is actually just a piece of gutter trash? Let me know your thoughts down below. And which one are you really looking forward to me reviewing? Because I hear they're both god-awful. Omen 3 or Omen 4? Let me know. Please, please like and share this video so we can get shared around, get some extra views, get some more eyes on this channel to become awesome subscribers like all of you. If you are considering being a subscriber, like I said, we got the rest of the Omen movies, we got the Omen ranking, we got 31 on 31 coming, you don't want to miss it, so hit the subscribe button. If you enjoyed this video to the point that you actually want to consider contributing to this channel on a financial level and quite literally helping keep the lights on around here, while also getting exclusive perks and content for your contributions, please check out the link down below to my Patreon page. There's different tiers and different benefits for each tier, and I appreciate your consideration for that. Thank you guys for watching as always, and remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be.